Hey guys, welcome back to The Hide. We are in the gun room today. We have got another offering from Element Optics. Full disclosure, Shane up at uh, Element sent this out to us to check out. So huge thanks to him. But um, I, I tell you, I'll, I'll be honest. I don't really get too excited about optics much anymore. I mean, sub thousand dollars, most of them are going to do basically about the same thing. But when something's brought to my attention that is different that I haven't seen before. Maybe there's others like it out there that I just haven't been privy to, but this right here is one of them. And I have to say, this very well could be, for me, the perfect DMR rifle scope. So that's where I'm going to leave the question at the start of this review. Um, this I have not taken it out of the box yet, so this will be us unboxing it together. I'm going to stick it on one of the rifles. We're going to do a quick uh, elevation and windage test to check the turrets and I'm even going to try and get some shots through the glass in daylight and low light okay so this is one of the helix 2 to 16 power yes you heard that correct 2 to 16 by 50 so this is an eight times magnification scope I have to say this very well could be the most universal magnification range I have ever seen on an optic. Um, the 1 to 10s, LPVOs, those are pretty nice, but this is getting you all the way out to 16. Now, granted, you're not going to have, you know, a co-witness one power on this, but that's not what this scope was designed for. So I'll go ahead and tell you this right here is designed for more of a hunting application from my understanding, but um, let me get a this out of the way and see if I can get the box here. It is a big box. So I kind of hold it like this here. So this is one of the Helix HD LRs, two to 16 by 50. This is a second focal plane, which I am a fan of. This has their APR 1C MOA reticle. Okay. So we're going to talk about the reticle in this here in a little bit as we get going as well, but two to 16 by 50. Okay. So this is an HDLR. So high definition, long range. They actually make another one in this series. That's just the Helix HD, same magnification range. However, the turret is going to be a little bit different, which we'll talk about here after we get this puppy out of the box. So of course your owner's manual gives you a reticle guide as well, which like I said, we are going to talk about this here in a minute. Um, decal. We got a cleaning cloth. We got a, um, this is, I'll talk about this a little bit too, but this is one of the thread protectors for your uh, scope caps. I'll show you what that's for here directly. A couple of Allen keys. We get a Panasonic battery. This is illuminated, which is pretty nice. We got a throw lever. It also comes with a sunshade. That's pretty awesome. And it does give you two means, again, of protecting your lenses. So with this being a sort of a hunting application type scope um, developed for that application, it comes with see-through scope caps. So that's, that's a nice little touch, especially for those of you guys that might be hunting in maybe less than stellar conditions. Maybe you're getting a little bit of snow, it's kind of overcast, maybe some drizzle. You can keep these caps closed. You can still see through the scope and make a shot if an animal was to walk into your field of view. So that's a good touch as well. But out of the package, it does come with the bikini cover. So let me get this other part of the box out of the way here. And we'll get this sucker unpackaged. So we'll take it out of the plastic wrap here. All right, so this is going to be initial impressions for all of us here. So needless to say, I'm pretty, pretty stoked. So inspection sticker, I'm going to go ahead and pop that off. So a huge thanks to CH. Appreciate you taking the time to guarantee the quality of this optic so that's nice but here is the bikini cover let's pop that off all right so here it is um again i have reviewed a couple of the other models that uh, element produces and 
they are just they they are built really high quality. I mean, I I challenge you all if you have not looked into these brands, check out something that they sell. You will be really surprised for what it is it costs and what it is you're actually getting. So let's kind of go over the features. Of course, the big one is going to be the 2 to 16 magnification range. Let's see. Mag ring is extremely smooth, but tight. So we definitely like that. This does have side focus. So we've got 15 yards, 15 yards to infinity. Illumination gives you six different brightness settings right here so easily to get to there let's take a look at the turret so this is where the difference comes in as far as the standard hd model and the hdlr that's why i think this particular model here lends itself to potentially being maybe the best dmr rifle that i have seen or dmr rifle scope on the market today so let's check out our Nice positive clicks. This does come with a hard zero stop. So you can take and this little knurled cap here, toolless design, just unscrew that like so. And then just lift your, your turret off. And then you can see here is your hard zero stop. So you can take that off, make your adjustments for your zero, Stick that back on, tighten these little set screws down. There's three of them. You do not want to put the fear of God into these. You just want to snug them down and then re-zero your cap, put on your knurled screw, and you're good to go. So really, really nice feature, easy to use, super simple, and it's included. You don't have to source something else. So if you are looking at this for a true hunting application, you might want to go with the standard HD model because that one has an elevation turret that is also capped. It's not exposed like this. It'll look like this here. So if you were gonna use this as a DMR style of rifle scope, you could leave this exposed and they give you the option of leaving it exposed and protecting the ring or the the uh, threads on that there because it, they give you the thread protector so that's what that would look like which that's probably how i'm going to leave it now they do claim this to be toolless on these style of turrets i would kind of disagree with that just because you do have to employ some sort of an implement to take that out they say that you can use the rim of a shell but that's technically using a tool but um Nonetheless, everybody has a cartridge on them. Everybody usually has a quarter or a dime or something. Either way, you can loosen that, reset your zero, stick it back on, and you're back in the game. So nonetheless, I, I really, really like the way this is set up. The overall dimensions of this, you're looking at a little over 13 inches in length. And right they claim right at about 27 ounces. So let's see what we have listed on my scale here so let's change it to ounces they got i got 26 6 i think they claim like 27 1 so that's pretty darn close i will definitely take that so it's it's not a super light scope by no means however this is a 30 millimeter tube and with the addition of this being an HD model, if I believe this has the same internal glass that their Helix has or their, um, their Titans have. So you're getting some really, really good glass quality in a scope in this price range. So that's definitely something to take note of. The, um, <clears throat> like I said, it's a 30 millimeter tube, 50 millimeter objective, got roughly about four inches of eye relief. This is a second focal plane, so it's going to be calibrated. This model on the 16 power, and I believe the standard HD model is calibrated, I believe, at maybe 8 power. Um, there is a good video online from them kind of giving you a little bit of data as far as that goes. It uh, You have a 100 MOA of adjustment range in this elevation turret. So that is 
insane. You get 15 MOA of adjustment per revolution. You do have a revolution gauge on the turret or on the scope here itself to let you know how many revolutions you've gone. You do have uh, 45 MOA of adjustment in the windage. So um, I tell you, it you're getting a lot of rifle scope for the money. I'm really anxious to get this thing put on a rifle and get it back to the range and see what it's going to do, see how it looks through that glass. So um, give me a few minutes, guys, here. I'm going to get this put on a rifle, and I'll meet you guys back at the hide. All right, so before we get shooting, like I said, I did want to kind of go over their reticle a little bit. I really like it. It's got a lot of functionality, but it's not ridiculously busy to where you can't make shots. So I do appreciate that. So to kind of go over what their reticle is kind of about here, we have the APR-1C. So the C stands for a clean reticle, from what I understand. It's got a bunch of different hash marks, dots, so on and so forth. So let's kind of go over some of those. The best thing that I like about this reticle is the center dot. The center dot is only a quarter MOA. So, I mean, you can take an extremely precise shot with this. So, my uh, Titan has the same style of center dot, and I actually use that on my NRL 22, my 22 bench rest gun, 22 LR. So, it, it is precise. I mean, you can get some very, very fine, very small targets zoomed in on and still have and it's not going to block it so that's that that's definitely a plus your b and c uh scale marks there are a quarter moa you get on uh, d here that's going to be two moa hash lines e so from here to here that's going to be four the f tapered bars on the ends um h you have four moa arrows which you can see Right there, those are the arrows that it's pointing to up through there. Um, I, you have one MOA hash lines. And then the line thickness itself is roughly 0.1 MOA. And as you would see here in the, um, in the HDLX or HDLR model, this whole section of reticle is illuminated. Now, in the standard HD model, it's only the center portion with a little bit of a BDC style built in. So you do get a lot of illumination with this style of reticle too. So you can use this reticle to, you know, you know, measure antler size or measure animal size or target size at distance. Just remember you would need to have that on 16 power in order to, uh, for that to be accurate. So um, um, you have holdover indication uh, numbers down here. So it, there's a lot of good information in a reticle that is not really busy. I am definitely a fan of that. So uh, let's uh, let's take a look. Let's get it uh, on the bench here, and we'll see what uh, see what kind of precision we can get out of those turrets, and kind of go from there, guys. All right, guys, we got our Helix HDLR mounted up in an Aero Precision SPR mount. I've got it on top of my 6.5 Creedmoor upper. Stay tuned. Definitely going to get a review on that. You'll want to look at that. But we're going to shoot a quick tracking test here. I'm using some 140 grain SIG OTM match. Very, very good ammo. I I really like this test. I have not done this yet, so this is going to be a first for us all. But we're going to be able to check our elevation and our windage tracking and see if it'll all go back to zero when we're done. So it's pretty interesting to see. But uh, I tell you, I wish you guys were here to see through this thing. I am really, really impressed with the clarity. I mean, it's just like looking through a window. But um, we're going to take the first shot here. We're going to try and center punch it at the bottom orange circle. And then we're going to go left and right, 5 MOA, and shoot those. And then we're going to go up the center line all the way up to 25 MOA and then back down to our point of impact zero. So let's uh, quit yapping and see what this thing will do. So our very first shot. Okay, now let's go, let's see here, 
we want to go to the left five so let's see here oh and i did not i forgot to zero that so let's take our shell case here and go ahead and move our turret cap to zero just so that way there's no misrepresentation of the scope just by me missing part of the so zero that back on stick our screw back in and I do apologize for the wind guys it seems like I have just been unlucky as Kim <laughs> as can be over the past few videos with the wind here where i'm at in southern indiana i tell you it's either feast or famine sometimes so let's go ahead and go to the left five moa now ideally this shot is going to line up right in the five moa line so once we get done shooting this we'll get some close-ups of the target and really see how we did now i'm going to still shoot at the same point of aim i'm not going to move that throughout this whole test The only thing it should move is the bullet impact. Okay. Go back to zero. Now let's go to the right, five MOA. Okay. Okay, let's put that at zero. Now we're gonna to start to track up. So let's go up, our first one is five. Okay, our next one is 10. Next one is 15. Okay, put my other rounds in here. Now the next one up is going to be 20. All right. Let's see what we get with 20. The next one up is going to be 25. All right. Okay, now I'm going to go back down to my zero stop and take one final shot. And back on zero. All right. 
Very nice. So let me walk down. I'm going to grab that target. I'll bring it back up. We could take a look at it on the bench together. We'll get some final thoughts. I definitely want to get some uh, shots through the scope for you guys. And I'll probably wait a little later on today and I'll get another one. So I'm going to inset some uh, kind of some lower light shots through this scope to it. A couple of different magnification ranges. But um, so far, really, really happy. All right, guys, so I ran down and grabbed our tracking target test here. So let's take a look. Our first shot pretty much center punched right what we were shooting for. I can't ask for much better than that. Then we went five to the left, five MOA. So the way these targets work is your shot should fall within that five MOA designation. Now we fell a little bit short there and we went a little bit over here. So I don't know what their margin of error is. However, I mean, you know, this is a sub thousand dollar scope. Pretty sure probably the MSRP on this one is probably going to be around the 750 to $800 range. Street price, you're looking at probably 550 to 650. Um, is your tracking going to be 100% perfect in price points of that scope? Probably not. However, for realistic use this is more than adequate now this one here is a little bit concerning don't really like that that one was up from here a little bit let's go down to our 10 so we have five we have 10 here 10 here so our shot hit here should have hit here that i'm okay with that we're pretty much dead on the money here so 15 we hit right here so i'd say that's probably pretty good our 20 so our next one here we hit just a little bit above that there so and then we hit basically right on the money here on the 25 moa so i'm going to call it good guys i'm okay with that i think that is going to be more than enough for any hunting application in this class of scope as well as my personal philosophy of use for this scope which is going to be dmr rifle i'm going to go ahead and say it I think they're missing the ball on only touting this as a hunting right or a hunting scope. I think this is, would serve absolutely perfect the LR model as a DMR optic. I think it's going to hold, you know, a heck of a lot of value in that particular scale of use as well, which is what I'm going to use it for. You guys know I don't really hunt, but uh, I definitely hunt and ventilate a lot of paper. So I think this right here is going to serve my needs perfectly. Uh, definitely take a look at it. I'm going to start throwing in some uh, still shots through looking through the glass. So take a look at this one here. This one is going to be at 25 yards. I'm going to put this on two power and you can kind of get an idea that, you know, you can even shoot this in close. Say you are using it as a hunting application optic. You can shoot, you know, 25, 50 yards very, very easily. Today, it's kind of dusk, it's cloudy today, and you're still getting tons of light gathering through that 50 millimeter objective with that 30 millimeter tube. The exit pupil is really big in this scope. Eye relief is amazing. Next one up, I am going to do 12 power at 110 yards, and you see that perfectly clear. Great, great glass. The reticle itself, as you can see, is, is crisp. It's not overbearing. You can still pick out and precision point targets, points of impact. Now let's go out to 210, 210 yards, and I'm going to go ahead and crank it up to 16 power. And as you can see, it's just as clear here. Adjusted the side focus to match that. It matched up perfectly with the 200 yard marking on the side focus, which you can tell that the mechanisms inside the scope are doing exactly what they need to do. And then finally, I'm going to put in a 110 yard shot here dusk so right before the sun goes down and you can see how crisp and very very minimal spillage of the illuminated reticle so guys i'm telling you if you have slept on element optics you need to hit up their website check out some of their different models get online and try one out for yourself i have a sneaking hunch you're really going to be happy that you did so post up below let me know if you guys got any questions on these optics be glad to answer what i can or direct you to those who know a lot more about them than me 
do not forget to subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get the push for uh, 20,000 subs, and I definitely cannot do it without you guys. Hit us up on Patreon if you'd like to support the channel a little bit further. Appreciate you all, and as always, shoot straight. Later.